Welcome back everyone to the Coaching Space podcast with me, Justin Bodel, a place where I look at the people side of performance. My guest today is former Sharks rugby legend, it's safe to say, Keegan Daniel. Having joined the Sharks at a young age, Keegan amassed a whopping 273 caps for his provincial team and will go down as one of the most capped Sharks players of all time. Keegan also earned himself a number of Springbok caps, deservedly so, and got to spend time playing over in Japan to add to his illustrious career. During his time with the Sharks, Keegan was also most notably made captain of his beloved franchise. From the end of 2011 to the end of 2013, and over that two-year period, he led the team to back-to-back -to -back Curry Cup finals and ultimately Curry Cup glory in 2013. In today's episode, the three questions that I posed to, to Keegan are all around leadership. He shares openly, he shares honestly, he shares some really great insights on what it takes to be an effective leader. I hope that you enjoy. Well, good morning, Keegan. Thanks so much for joining me. Morning, Just. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks for having me on your uh, podcast. No, pleasure, man. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to our chats. Um, I, love, I love talking leadership and um, yeah, really, really looking forward to, to hearing some of your thoughts. Yeah, hopefully uh, there's some valuable insights, but um, <laughs> you know, certainly not perfect in any way or don't have all the answers, but I look forward to sharing. No, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. All right, cool. Well, listen, let's, let's dive straight in. Question number one, um, probably the the sort of the, the age old debate on leadership, I suppose, in your opinion, are leaders born or are they made? In other words, is it something that you kind of born to do, or do you think it's something that you can develop over time? I think it's, it's an interesting uh, question. I think it's a bit of both. I don't, I don't think it's just one, one or the other. Um, you know, I, I, I gave it some thought and I, I look back to, and I, I look into different industries. Yeah. Um, I think naturally some people are born with talents and gifts in certain areas. Yeah. Um, but those talents and gifts aren't enough in their own rights. There needs to be work and effort and they need to be upskilled and they need to be, yeah. um, channeled in the right direction. So, you know, not only from a leadership point of view, but like, you know, some, some people are, are gifted chefs and they they just have a knack for it as as young kids and growing up and maybe um the environment lent towards you know becoming a chef and so they yeah. have a certain set of skills and then you have someone who may be in their 20s and i think the show master chef when it first started out showed that you know they're, they're passionate yeah. people about cooking and they love food and, and they, they don't necessarily have all the skills or all the talent but through dedication and, and uh, learning the skills and putting the time and effort in and making mistakes, they themselves can become quality um, chefs in their own rights. And I, and I mm -hmm. think it, it leans similarly to leadership. I, I do think that um, certain individuals are born with a, an ability to lead and maybe through their character and who they are, the people generally gravitate towards them because of yep. just who they are as people. Yeah. And um, that's seen as a, a, a kind of leadership. And then, you know, as you grow and you get older, some people grow into it. You know, a lot of people that are 13 to 18 maybe don't show leadership skills, but, you know, because of the environments in which they grow up and they learn a certain skill that maybe someone doesn't have and that um, can uh, give them the tools to become a great leader down the road. And, and leaders need skills. You know, you need to upskill yourself. It's something that I, I certainly experienced. You know, I was... Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think I was born a, a natural leader. I think I might have had, had natural tendencies um, just because of who I was as a person. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think in, in the younger years, people just think because you, the way you are and maybe you play a lot of first team sports and you, you automatically, you should be that person, but that's not always necessarily the right person. Yeah. Um, but certainly, um, you know, when I got into my twenties and my, you know, after school, I, I was, I wasn't seen as a leader. I was just, they're playing per se so i had to develop a certain set of skills and through coaching and mentorship and you know people coming to me and saying look i think you could be but you need to hear your flaws and you need to go and learn these certain set of skills um, um otherwise you, you you can't be a leader um yeah and you know i've always said this um to whether i've worked with schoolboys i've worked with adults we're all leaders in our own right um yeah. you know we, I wrote a note down here and I said, I was just thinking about what is leadership? What, are, what do leaders do? And leaders make decisions. 
ultimately. That's what great leaders do. Now, yeah. Great leaders make great decisions under exceptional amount of pressure and often it's the right decision. And even if it's the wrong decision, they're still convicted in the decision that they're making. And human beings, every day we wake up, we make decisions from the time, what time we want to get up, what meal we have in the morning, how we talk to our partners, whether we do our homework. Yeah. Know, we intrinsically think to be a leader, you need a title, you need a badge, or you need a C next to your name, or you need to be class captain. But ultimately, we lead ourselves every single day, every single day that we're on earth. Um, and, and, and as simplistic as that sounds, um, yeah. we, are, we are continually making decisions. Um, and I think um, we forget that often. Um, and I think people, especially young adolescents and people and kids at school think, well, just because I'm not the captain or I'm not a yeah. prefect or I'm not a leader, but actually it's quite the contrary. You're all leaders in your own right. Um, so I think it's a bit of the both, you know, it's the old chicken and egg story, isn't it? Um, yeah. I think definitely <laughs> leaders are, your, 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 your natural leaders are probably born with a bit of a gift and, um, and then they learn leaders, like they, they learn a skill. Um, so it, it certainly is a bit of, bit of both for me. That's awesome, mate. Gee, skis, and I love what you were saying there just about leaders making decisions. Um, I, think that's, I think that's such a powerful way to look at it and, and that idea of leading self. Like you say, like we, we lead ourselves every day. You know, we, we're leading in our relationships. We're leading in our families. Um, you're just leading yourself. Um, so I, I love that it, it kind of also creates this narrative that it's, it's open to anyone. Like you say, you, you don't have to wait to get the captaincy badge or to be named a prefect or to be the leader of a company. It's like, actually, yeah. you, you're already developing those skills. And if you, yes, you might have a certain leaning towards it, but if you, if you really work hard and you think about what it takes to be a leader, anyone can do it. Absolutely. I, I think the, the thought of a title, um, the only thing that changes the title is responsibility essentially um because you you are responsible for others you make a decision and it, it will have a knock-on effect on others yeah it doesn't um abscond you as an individual just because you're not just because you don't have the title that you don't have responsibility of course you do yeah but, you know yeah. in terms of like a, a a modern day leader or your your typical leader leader that has a title you know you're making decisions that are not only impacting yourselves but they're impacting others and the outcome possibly Absolutely. um Absolutely. so yeah i'm a big believer in that people lead themselves every day we're all leaders in our own rights and um yeah i find myself fighting against this whole um you know look at look at modern society and, and kind of like your old school like prefects of school and library monitors and that i'm like are we really teaching the kids to be leaders or are we telling them that they're the boss and they're in charge or are we encouraging everyone to be a leader mm -hmm. um yeah, so it's it's like I have this yeah. back and forth, you know. But like anything, there's there's always good and bad, um, or positive yeah. and negative to any any process. Yeah, no, I love I love what you're saying there, and and maybe just kind of draw, drawing off of that, um, you know, uh, the, a second question I suppose then is what are some of those qualities? What are some of those characteristics that you think good leaders do need to have? So 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 like you said, you know, you. You, people are going to have different personalities and some people may have more of a natural leaning towards it, but mm. you, there, yeah. there's, there's probably still some core kind of fundamentals or characteristics or qualities that people need to display if they want to be a good leader. In your opinion, what, what would some of those things be? See, I like, I like that statement. You said to be a good leader. Um, ah. because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's some people in positions that are terrible leaders, but they're in the position because they either got a great degree or they knew someone or it's true. It, over time. I mean, I've had that experience where someone was made a leader and I asked why, and they were like, no, well, they've, they've, they've been here the longest. I said, well, that's ridiculous because if the um, lady that's uh, the nurse in the hospital had been here the longest, you're not going to make her chief of surgery, are you? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Is that mindset around, yeah, I, I, I have this, like, um, I like having a quite a holistic uh, view of, of this. Um, yep. What makes a good leader? Sure. I think in, in uh, thinking about this, about the characteristics, I really think that they, it depends because I think people have different leadership styles. Mm -hmm. um, good point. You know, some leaders are very much result orientated. Um, some leaders are very process orientated. Some leaders are kind of, carefree and they happy to go and like just let everyone do what they want 
other leaders are really people focused. I'm a very big people focused leader. I was ne never really results driven. I mean, results are important whether you're in business or in sport. Yeah. Um, but I really believe in the ethos of creating really unbelievable individuals and um, within your environments and focusing on the people. Um, I think one of the greatest attributes of a leader is being able to understand the people you're leading and what makes them work and what they respond to. Yeah. And that can often be challenging in a, in a multi diverse cultural or religious environment. Um, yeah. where people have different views on different things and you're trying to get them all to pull into towards one direction mm. or to an end goal. And I think if you can have buy-in from your team and create a buy-in that they, you all understand that you want to get from here to there, um, here's the framework, but you yourself are allowed to be you within that framework as long as you're contributing positively to the end goal of the team. Yeah. Um, and you know it's it's up to the individual to really as a leader to to how you want to place yourself i was big on people i mean the way, way i sat in the change room i was really like thoughtful of how i sat i could uh, relate to all different cultures and religions and people i was i was like i was kind of a bit of a kaleidoscope because i wasn't just set in my ways you know and yeah. it's uh, sometimes challenging because you have to be accepting of um uh, other people's maybe beliefs and, and viewpoints um, yeah. that maybe don't fit yours, but yeah. that's the beauty of um, us all being different individuals uh, um, within a team. So, I mean, we can talk about things like, you know, lead, great leaders need to be courageous and they need to be disciplined and they need to show up on time and they need to, all, yeah. all those sort of things. Yeah. Um, I think they, they're pretty stock standard when you look at it. But mm -hmm. then you look at like, you know, a great leader it depends on some people will say one person's a good leader and one person's a bad leader depending on the experience you've had with them you know i had that with coaches yeah um, <laughs> some guys would say geez he's an unbelievable coach i'm like hang on my experience was he was an absolutely horrific coach so it depends on your experience um with that leader yes. um uh in life you know and for me really it comes down to the people like understanding the people what makes them tick yeah. you know how people respond some people respond to harsh criticism and, and and like it fires them up i'm like that someone tells me you're useless and you can't do it i'm like i'll do it other yeah. people need to be nurtured and they need to really um their hands need to be held and they're a little bit more sensitive and uh, empathetic in the way you, you would you deal with them um and for me it's always about going back to like your leadership style like going, okay cool this is how i lead and when it comes to decision-making processes and how you deal with, deal with people in, in tough situations, yeah. you always fall back into that why, like why are you the leader? Uh, what, 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 what is the reason that you are the leader yeah. and your leadership style? And I think that will put you in good stead going forward. That's um, a good point. Eh? And, and I think yeah. it's also like to be, to be authentic with that. Hey, like you, you can't try and lead in a way that isn't kind of, like in, in sync with who you are as a person right i mean because you, you'll you'll be found out i suppose absolutely I, I think yeah you know one of my you know in 2011 when i was offered the captaincy um of the sharks i was 26 years old yeah. um and i hadn't really captained the team for five years six years and you know my number one my, my number one uh uh Point to to plum at the time was listen as long as you keep selecting me because I'm the best player in my position and I'm performing not because I'm the captain yeah. so I think leaders need to perform you know we we often have um, leaders that will talk and they'll stand up and they'll do a great presentation and they 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 look good and all that kind of stuff but when it comes to action they you know guys I need to arrive on time if you if you continuously arriving late I mean that's just going to start sowing terrible seeds within your ranks um yeah so you, you've got to you've got to literally live your leadership you know don't just talk it you have to live your leadership um and it's imperative and it's imperative okay. to live it not only when the cameras are on you or it's in the environment that the right people are around you but live it when you're on your own and you're at the shops and you you know there's you've got to live it wherever you are in your daily life you know it's not just at the right moments with the right people so it's it's, it's a living leadership versus just a a leadership that's uh, conducive to the people that are in the room at the time. Yeah, I love that. Sure, and, and you're so right. Like you said, it's not a it's not a talking thing. You know, it's a it's a doing thing. And 
speaking of that and and for your for your third and final question you you mentioned this to me once and this was a great example of you know kind of pr- when i thought about sort of leading in the moment being you know, practical leadership i think a lot of leadership is a is comes through experience and building experience in different difficult situations but something you said to me once um you were talking about uh, in a rugby context you were you guys were having a tough game you're behind the poles you know you're 30 points down whatever two minutes left on the clock um and and your captain comes to you and says something like come on guys we can still do it you know and yeah. And even with, you know, like, so, you know, a lot of leaders think, all right, this is my moment. I need to, I need to motivate the troops. I need to like lift the morale. I need to say something here that's yeah. you know, going to sort of lift the morale a little bit. And while the intention may have been good, actually, you found that a bit irritating. It actually isn't a very useful thing to say in that moment, because actually right now we, we actually can't do it. The, the reality is the results probably out of our reach now. So it did really make me think that a lot of leaders, I think, end up in these situations, maybe when the team's going through a tough time or people are struggling and they feel like they've got to say something, but they don't always know what's actually a useful thing to say. Um, and they might end up just throwing out a cliche or something that isn't actually very helpful. So w- w- what what would your advice, I mean, obviously that, that that's a very specific rugby example, but I think the, yeah. the, the, the message is important. What, what would your advice be maybe to leaders who are finding themselves in tough times what are the kind of things that you should be looking to say rather in those tough moments? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it goes back to what you're saying, like, uh, like the good characteristics of a leader. I think one of them, if we point out is, is being present in the moment. Um, yeah. and, and, and being present allows you to judge a situation. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the, the, the toughest parts and, and I can, uh, you know, business and sport are, there, there are a lot of uh, parallels and similarities yeah. Um, but, you know, sports really live now, go, 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 where business probably a little bit more drawn out. Yes. Um, uh, and, um, you know, you, you as a player and as a leader, you, you have to play the game. There are a lot of moving parts. You're looking at the scoreboard. You're looking at your players. You're looking at how much time is left on the clock. Um, is this is a bonus point? Do we need a bonus point or do we lose with a bonus point? Or do we, uh, there are so many... Um, factors yeah. at play or moving yeah. parts and you would yeah, put this all together and come up with a with a decision um for me there's there's nothing better than um and a lot of people you know there's a saying they say winners never quit um and i and i always find that very interesting i think i think true winners actually know when to quit i think true champions go listen i'm actually out of this one it's okay yeah i'll bounce back next week i've accepted it it's, it's a loss no problem yeah. it's not it's not quitting it's yeah. just knowing that you're not going to win yeah. Um, and that example actually that you brought up is, is a, it, it, it actually happened. We were, we were playing against the cheetahs. Um, subsequently to, sorry, your example, I was then part of a team and we were playing against the cheetahs. It was the, the, the Vodacom Cup side and we were getting absolutely hammered. I think we had 10 minutes left. We were down by 40 points and a couple of reserves came on and they were like kind of excited. And I was just like, guys, listen, fact is we're not going to win this game. It's fine. Yeah. We're 40 yeah. points down, unlikely, you know, they're playing well. We're not playing that well. But for the next 10 minutes, let's challenge ourselves with these three things. Let's go and try and outscore them in the next 10 minutes. Let's yes. be defensively strong um, and let's win all of our set piece in the next 10 minutes. And let's look if we can achieve that within the 10 minutes. So yeah. you're consistently changing the goal um, depending on what's facing you within the, within the environments in which you're in. And um, that can be challenging at times because you know, it, they are excitable people. And I think, I think people want, want honesty. They want people to say, you know, like you don't look good wearing that or you know, you, that makes you that way. Or, you know, yeah. it's, we, we want it, but we're so scared to give it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think often that kind of direction, I think that's, that's, that's the key here is giving your team, not a lot of people say, oh, but you've thrown all hope out the window. It's not about hope. It's about giving a new direction, a new goal yes. saying, fine, we might've lost the game. But let's look at let's when we watch these 10 minutes on film, do we achieve the new goals that we the mini goals that we set ourselves within those 10 minutes and we can build from that, you know? Like and I think often leaders don't want to accept defeat, they don't want to accept the fact that they are gonna lose or yes. um, you know, and, and you look at all sports and that can happen. You know, I often look at tennis and I go, you five love down in the first set and 40 love down, and they like just hit the ball out and lose it and then cool, rest and 
reset, you know, like yeah. I, I think smart and people get frustrated by that, but I think smart um, uh, sportsmen will, will uh, and sportswomen will, um, they'll reset their goals very, very quickly and accept the fact that this might be a defeat to a mountain that they can't climb. Yes. Um, and, I, and I think people want that, that sort of kind of clarity and direction and to know that it's okay. And it's also okay to lose. It's okay to have yeah. a setback, you know, it's not the yeah. end of the world. A lot of people think that it's, it's a negative mindset. I think it's an absolutely positive mindset going, guys, it's okay. We're going to lose and we try our best. Let's, let's just go for the next five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it is. Um, yes. And let's, let's do what we can you know if i just think of business in a sales role you know you're you're, you're you've set a goal this month to sell 40 vehicles and you only sell 35 have you failed well you know maybe in the bigger scheme of things but it's better than selling 34 you could have sold 30 well let's learn from that let's learn from why didn't you sell 40 or what what, yeah. what what how did you not close those other five deals yes. and maybe next month you do 36 and 37 and then when you get to 40 you're going to challenge yourself and say, well, next month I want to do 45 and maybe do 42. You haven't failed. Yeah. You're actually just getting closer and closer to success. You know, um, Love that. A, a, a good friend of mine has a business here in Durban. He said something, something to me the other day. He said nine out of 10 times people fail. And at one time you're successful. And he said, the problem is people fail slowly. He said, fail fast because you're going to get to success quicker. Yeah. You know, we, we're very afraid to, allow people to make mistakes, allow employees to fail, allow them to be creative, allow them to um, bl make blunders. But the quicker those happen, the faster you're going to learn, the quicker you, you are going to ultimately get to that number, that one success out of 10. And I love that mentality, you know, because um, a player like myself, I was always felt like, uh, and I think sports people and business people in the work environment, you're so afraid of failure. Yeah. Um, I think truly we, we can be successful when you are allowed to fail. Um, as long as you're failing fast, failing forward and learning through those failures, you'll get to that success a lot quicker. So I find that very interesting. You just like fail fast. 100%. I love that. Yeah. Keys, I think that's a perfect point to end it. I absolutely love, firstly, your honesty. Thank you so much. Like you mm. always, you, I, love, I love your honesty. I love the insight that you offer into, into what it takes to lead. I mean, you've obviously led at the highest level and it's just really fantastic to hear um, also that it's not out of reach for people that anyone can, can adopt these things. People can learn, people can, like you said, lead themselves and they can lead others well, if they have the right mentality. And if they also will, if they're willing to fail and if they're willing to take risks and if they're willing to make decisions and, and to see where those play out. So yeah, thank yeah. you so much for, yeah. for sharing, man. Only a pleasure. It's always good to catch up and uh, share. So I look forward to the next one. Yes, absolutely, man. Thank you so yeah. much. All right, cool. We'll check Thanks, you soon. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers. Bye. Bye.